Uh, what you're looking at is Copilot Developer Camp. And this is a virtual workshop that you can do if you want to do some of the demos that you've seen uh, my teammates and I do. Um, you can actually do this yourself using this virtual workshop and learn all about declarative agents and custom engine agents, building them with code. So if you like, um, if, if, you, if you're not intimidated by editing like a JSON file, right? Some of them are that simple that all you have to do is edit a JSON file. If you like collaborating with your team and allowing more than one person to edit the solution at the same time, if you like the idea of GitHub and being able to use your existing software development lifecycle, this is the solution for you. This is where you would want to go to build Copilot agents. Um, so that's what this is all about. Um, I'll just sort of introduce you to the site. Up at the top, we've got a promo for our November 7th event, and um, I'll just sort of drop that into the chat as well because this is a yeah, great collaborative, totally. Um, please register for this and join us on November 7th. Uh, we're going to go a lot deeper and it'll be kind of fun because we've got some interviews with um, some of our executives. Uh, Rob Howard will be there. Uh, Donna Sarkar will be there. We'll have um, Jeremy Thake as well as a lot of the usual suspects from my team, from the advocacy team. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, it's a 90 minute free virtual experience. Um, but then it, this is this announcement will go away probably on November eighth, right? Um, after that, there's a little preview here of or preview a review of Wave Two of Copilot. So if you're not sure what is an agent anyway and what are they talking about, and I thought I understood this and they just changed the names of things, this is a great intro. This is where Satya Nadella and Jared Spataro introduced Wave Two. A lot of this was uh, end user content, but they introduced the idea of agents. And then we go deeper in these videos. So there's a video on kind of how to start and even decide what type of agent do you want. And then deeper dives on custom engine agents, declarative agents, and uh, API plugins for declarative agents. And then comes the cool part is the hands-on labs. So what I'm gonna review today for you is this extend path where you're taking the AI that's inside of Microsoft 365 and building agents using that AI. So you don't have to, you know, you've already paid a license. You don't have to do that again. You don't have to buy another AI license. Um, you can, but you don't have to, right? Um, you can build a more tailored experience using declarative agents and that's what I'll walk you through today. Um, next week, we're going to have Aicha Bash come on the same call and talk about custom engine agents where you build your own. So I'm not going to go into that today. Um, here's the metaphor I use. Suppose you walk into a building and there's somebody at the front desk. And, you, you know, if you say, like, I've got an appointment, where should I go? They'll, they'll tell you. But if you say, uh, you know, I, I have a question about our HR benefits. Could you tell me the the uh, paternity leave policy in uh, in Australia, <laughs> right? They're going to say, what are you talking about? Or they might, you have to word your question exactly right, because even if Copilot has access to all that information, you it's got a huge universe of possible content to look at to answer your question. So people are familiar with this idea of talking to an expert somebody who focuses just on HR benefits in this example. That's what your declarative agent's doing. It's, or any of these agents, it's providing a tailored experience specific to a certain domain within your organization. And with these labs, you're gonna learn how to do it. So I'm gonna come back and walk through them and show you kind of what you get out of each lab. But I'll quickly show off that we've got more videos here. And then um, Copilot Camp in a Box, so suppose you want to do these presentations locally. You want to do it for your user group, for inside your company. Um, we provided all of the PowerPoint slides and even recorded demos of every one of these um, approaches in labs. And so that's here for you to download. And this is already getting used quite a bit. Uh, we've got some discussions. And 
I'm happy to announce that my teammates um, have built some really cool Microsoft Learn modules. So it's another, and I'll put the link here. Uh, we've gone ahead and posted that here. And we intend to kind of keep this homepage as sort of a summary of all the learning experiences that are available to you as they come out on building Copilot agents. And uh, I'll point out one other thing about this before we go into the labs is that this is actually hosted in the same GitHub repo. So if you click up here, you'll actually land in the GitHub repo where you can submit issues, pull requests, join the discussions, and of course, all of the solution files are here. So uh, what I'm about to walk you through is all these solutions. Every one of them has a um, has it the finite the completed lab is right here in case you need it. So let's go back and look at the actual lab list. And what I'd like to do is just quickly talk about each one. So lab E0 is where you set up your environment. And we'll walk you through. Uh, we're using Visual Studio Code with Node.js. So it's cool because it runs on uh, PC, Mac. Um, it probably runs on Linux. I haven't had a chance to test it. But it, it you know, it, it's um, tools that, are, that work everywhere and that are all free. And um, then you'll build your first declarative agent. And so if I go into that lab, you'll see that you can kind of follow along as you go, right? And you can also see all the steps right here at the top. And as you go through the labs, so here we're building the Tray Genie, right? And you're going to learn. We've we've been pretty liberal about putting in more instructional content. You can skip over some of this if you don't want to, but we really wanted to make a full learning experience. So you're going to get these special notes, uh, detailed, and and Robbie Williams wrote this, and she did a fabulous job of providing uh, more more details. And then you finally get, you know that you're supposed to do something when you see the steps begin, right? So we're going to first install Teams Toolkit. When you finish, maybe you're going to do this over the period of a few days, right? When you finish, there's a little checkbox, click, that will give you a little encouragement. It'll also keep track of where you are. So if I go back to the top, you'll see that it's checked off the step, right? Now, if I want to go to the next step, I just click on it, and they all hyperlink. So just kind of helping you to navigate through these labs uh, becomes a lot easier uh, with, with those, those capabilities. Everything, tons of screenshots, tons of details. At the end of lab E1, you will have the geolocator game, which you've seen demoed on some of our calls. If you missed it, I'll just quickly uh, spin it up. This is a declarative agent that uses files in SharePoint and instructions. So there's not, it's really simple. Um, if you can edit a JSON file and write a prompt, you already have the skills to do this, right? So um, so great there. And um, this one started with Aicha writing like a four line game that is kind of amazing in its succinctness. But then Rabia kind of turbocharged it with some scoring and some special um, games that are more advanced that you can play based on the SharePoint contents and other stuff. I actually enjoy playing this game. It's not just a demo, right? It's actually really cool. Um, and you know, it's funny because it usually starts with uh, something in Europe that's known for its uh, rich history. And oh, usually it's a maritime climate, right? It's often a different city. A lot of cities in Europe have this this capability or these those attributes. So anyway, lots of fun. I encourage you to check that out and to build it yourself, right? Then the next one, if I kind of scroll down, is Lab E2. So in this lab, you're going to build an API. Why? Because you, you really to really make the richest declarative agent, you want to have an API behind it. So what you'll build is um, an Azure function that looks kind of like this. It's got a few en entry points. So it's got slash me. So get information about me. Get information. It's a consulting scenario. So it's trade research, uh, which is one of the specially trademarked legal to use fictitious companies that Microsoft has. Um, you can get information about consultants and about projects. And um, if you want to try it, right, you can, what this exercise will actually, um, sorry, bring you into um, the an HTTP file 
where you can actually test the request and just see, well, if I click slash me, what do I get? I get all the information about about me, which until you get to the, the lab on authentication is going to be a fictitious user, a Avery Howard. And uh, you, you can charge time to your projects. You can do all these things. So this just allows you to familiarize yourself with the API and, and just make sure that it's all working. One really cool thing about this that um, another one of my teammates, Gary Trinder, um, kind of taught me how to do, and now I use it in a lot of my projects, is that this uses uh, Azure table storage under the covers, and it actually spins up uh, a, a storage emulator called Azurite, which means when you're debugging locally, you actually have a real database that so if you if you build your hours, it's actually going to remember that you build your hours. The next time you come back to the lab, even if you shut off your machine, everything is there. It's not just in memory. It's really being stored for you, which is which I think is pretty cool. And hats off to Gary for coming up with that. So the next lab, so it's like, yeah, the thing is that you kind of have to do this to get to the next step. So it's really more of an Azure Functions thing than a... a um, uh, Copilot thing, and you know what? You could really use the API. It doesn't have you don't have to use Azure Functions. It's just the easy way to do it because Teams Toolkit gets it and immediately stands it up. Then you add a declarative agent, so you're going to create a SharePoint site and um, and put that into with some more documents about the the Tray Research projects. Upload those, and then you're going to connect a uh, an API. So what I can do with this is I can actually say, well, find consultants with TypeScript skills, and let's make it a little bit more uh, who are available now, right? So I really want it to not only query on the skills, but also on the availability. And so a fair amount of effort went into this to make it kind of realistic-ish. Like, you know, we put in enough data that you can actually see it's kind of getting useful. Like I often, when I was doing consulting, would try to find somebody with a certain skill. And yet, if I had a long list from the search results, I wouldn't know who was available. I wouldn't know where they were, right? I can do things like say, who is closer, which, who is closer to the Contoso project? And, you know, this would probably be me going through each one and trying to figure it out. And I don't know why this isn't happening for me, but um, let's try again. And it will actually go and uh, look up the project, look up the location of the two consultants and show me a map and, and tell me that really it is um, Avery who is closer, right? And so Pretty, pretty nice and definitely showing that the AI is doing more than a traditional search engine. So the only problem with this is that at this point, we've kind of handed you the packaging. For, you've just copied and pasted the packaging for the declarative agent and the plugin, which is a bit complex. It requires a swagger file. It requires a um, an open API definition, a plugin file, all these things. So in lab four, you're going to add a new feature to the API. So my goal on this one was, I didn't really want you to have to learn how to talk to Azure Table Storage and program Azure Functions, because although those are useful things to know, this is a Copilot lab. But I did want you to have to go in and get and, and learn about the packaging files. So rather than ask people to start from scratch, what we did here was we added um, a new path to the API, which is for projects. So initially you can't ask about projects. That third prompt wouldn't have worked. And you actually go through all of the packaging files and add the little bits that you need for project management, right? So now you're gonna actually be forced to go and visit all those files and learn how it works so that you can you know, build your own. Um, after that, we add adaptive cards. And adaptive cards are really fun. And of course, there's a video. And then um, you come in here and, and add these to the packaging. 
so that Copilot knows how to respond. You saw the adaptive card in, when I ran it a minute ago. That's not initially there, or you get this kind of ugly default card that doesn't have very much information. You'll learn how to actually use the adaptive cards designer and build them um, so that they look like what you want them to look like. Every request, at, which they call um, operations or functions inside of Copilot, right? Which is basically every type of API request, you can put different adaptive cards. So somebody asks a question, they get one about a consultant, they get a consultant adaptive card. They bill their hours, they get an hours build adaptive card that confirms what happened, right? So you get to find all that out. And then finally, the, uh, the big one in a way is to add enter ID authentication. And the reality is any API that you would use is almost certainly going to be authenticated, right? I mean, we're all, um, unless you're building something for public use, maybe you're building, maybe you've got an API for the transit system in your city, that might be public. But most APIs have some kind of authentication in them. And so that's what you're going to learn in this lab. You're going to learn to set up, and this one I'm kind of overhauling right now. So um, it works, but there's an easier way. And so um, Teams Toolkit has improved their tooling. And I think we can get this down to an F5 experience where you just click F5 and it all works. And then we'll have uh, an optional exercise to go and see all the things that it created for you so that you actually you know, know how to put it into production or maybe, you're, uh, maybe you want to write a script to do this in, in a different environment, that kind of thing. Um, uh, use there, there's bicep files involved. Uh, we'll walk you through all that in the review. But right now, everything gets set up manually, so you totally know how it works. It's just kind of a little bit more cumbersome. So that's the that's Copilot Camp, and um, I'm glad to answer questions. I think my big call to action is to join us um, in the live stream on uh, November 7th. I'll put the URL one more time. And um, then I'll see if we've got some questions that I can answer. Um, I think Jim has a great, great, great question there. What is the requirement from licensing perspective to go through the labs just to set uh, the expectations? Yeah, yeah. No, great, great question. So um, the they all require Microsoft 365 Copilot. No, that's not true, actually. Okay, Extend Copilot, the Extend labs that, I'm, that I just showed require Microsoft 365 Copilot. Um, that's it. Now, you didn't ask what permissions do you need <laughs> because you also need um, a, uh, you need permission to uh, sideload applications, which is off by default. And you need, um, let's see, what else do you need? For the auth lab, you need the ability to register and consent to enter ID applications. That's not like a global admin thing. It's a couple of intra uh, permissions, but they are a bit sensitive. So you might not want to do that in production. Um, then for build your own agent, uh, I guess we'll, we'll double check with ICHA on this, but right at the moment, I believe what you need there is Azure AI Studio. So you're going to need Azure licenses. You're going to, of course, need Microsoft 365. However, you can run them in Teams um, without the Copilot license, at least at the moment. So that's one where you could, um, you know, if you have Azure to Azure access, you could set that up um, with with just an M365 Copilot. So that is a great question. I know, as Vesa said earlier, um, a lot of us on the inside of Microsoft are lobbying to get to find a solution to the the fact that people abused the free program and. This is why we can't have nice things, right? Um, and and they're trying to get some kind of a program, and I don't know what the deal will be because I know the cost of hosting Copilot is also expensive. So I have no idea what's going to happen, but hopefully it will get easier and less expensive over time. 